alarm usually goes off 10 to 5, 5 o'clock, something like that. We usually try and get onto the boat and try and get out of the harbour for 6 or quarter past 6. Generally about an hour steam to the first string of pots. We do a lot of lobster and crab fishing and shrimp fishing right up to Christmas and then we tend to focus on whelk fishing. The fishing for whelks is better with cold weather, cold water, rough weather. So yeah, it's a winter time fishery for us. My mother's side of the family would have been all fishermen. My grandmother can trace back like five generations. They would have done a lot of salmon, trout fishery, fish long lines for cods, done all types of fishing for years. Uh, they were coal men as well, so in the summertime they would have done coal. Greystones being a, a small harbour, you know, that the coal boats would have landed coal in the summertime. Because of the pots that we have, we don't practice, it can flow out. But like obviously if you get it, you crack it, pull it in, tighten it, it's gonna stay there. We've cracked 14 boxes this morning. That's a lot. So we like to crack a little bit more just in case the fish is good and we have to put in two crabs. Okay. We're fishing today well. So basically they're like sea snails. We'll haul away throughout the day, right up to about four o'clock and we have we have a truck coming this evening to collect all our uh, shellfish. It's all about quality, we, what we're fishing, so it needs to be got back to the factory, you know, very quick, where it's processed. So that's why we have to land every day. Uh, we're just on the first string of pots, so we get the gear on. See them? Oh. The ships can pull our marker boys off. So sometimes we're looking for strings in the dark and there's no cans, no markers on them. Usually back about five o'clock this evening. Sometimes it's a bit later, it depends. By the time you get well tidied up and ready for the next day, you're probably getting home at half seven every night. So it's literally, you know, get your dinner, shower, talk to the kids for half an hour and then you're going to bed. So we do that, we do that for Five days a week, pretty. What we're extremely worried about at the minute is wind farms. Where we are at the minute is going to be cable corridors for cables, and where we'll be in the afternoon is where the wind turbines are going. So it's a that's a big worry for us. Big worry. And then we have. The government's looking at putting these marine protected areas uh, in the wind farm. So not only like will we lose the areas for for fishing with wind turbines, but then we have these marine protected areas coming at us as well. Now it's like our future is in jeopardy. It's just we do every day we get up we go, why do we bother? Like you know, because like last week we we a day where we three different wind farms contacted us about surveys that they're going to be doing this summer, all of which are in the area where our gear is. So we don't know what's going to happen this summer. We really don't. We don't know if we're going to be able to keep fishing or we're going to have to stop fishing. We just, we just don't know. You know, we try and work around the weather as well, but we need to be doing four days a week to make it profitable. Like. Just to do well out of fishing, we really need to be fishing 200 plus days a year. If you start dropping below that, it's okay, but you're not going to have a good year, you know. And we've just we've been getting the same amount of money for the catch, and we're trying to absorb that as well. You can see how rich the grounds are in down here, right in Dublin Bay. Like you know, it's healthy. It wouldn't have always been like that. It was it was well polluted years back, but you can see there's it's great to see life in here. It's really good like. See we've all got decent boats and you know they, they don't come cheap these days. I, everything to do with fishing is expensive, like all our gear, ropes, anchors, pots. Pots are, you know, 60 pounds sterling each. Everything's gone through the roof in the last three years, like literally 50% more expensive. Okay, so that's four strings. So we've 17 to nail. Bit of work to do, but you. 
fished out of Greystones when I was 14. It was my first summer job, you know, working on a boat. So that's, I'm 46 now, so that's 32 years ago. Pre the development in the harbour, we were fishing away for years. It was January 2008, they put us out of the harbour. You know, we had known that there was something in the pipeline and we, so we all got involved and we asked would they put a fisherman's area in it, so they did. Turns out in about 2006, fisherman's area seemed to vanish off the map. So they literally had given away our area and didn't have anywhere else to accommodate us. That was the start of our arguments with them in the harbour. I've been arguing with them for 15 years. The first time we came back to the harbour and said we're coming back fishing whether you like it or not was 2015. They made it that difficult for us because it was hard and all the way around the harbour, it was a nightmare. got really tense last year. The marine operator went into the high court to get an injunction. So between one thing or another, we, we stayed in the harbour, we didn't leave and we fought the injunction, um, which was expensive, but we did and uh, between one thing and another, <laughs> they had to vacate their injunction, which was great for us. My barrister had copped something and it was brilliant. So we came up with an agreement in mediation and that agreement was that he was saying that we were causing a danger being on the North Pier to the kids swimming. And the spirit of trying to sort it out, we said we would go on to his marina for the three months of the summer while the kids were on holidays, okay? So I pay full marina fees. His part of the agreement was that from September to the following June or whatever, we were to be left alone. So we kept our side of the agreement. Uh, when the end of September came, we went back against the harbour wall. We weren't there four days and the legal letter started again saying that our agreement had been scrapped. And, and then they started locking the gate to try and lock us out. But it turns out they had no planning permission for the gates. So again, I had to get a planning report done and threaten them with a planning injunction because the council had fitted them with no planning permission. So they, they, they opened the gates and then they tried to put blocks out in front of us, which we, we promptly pulled out of the way. But they've tried everything, everything that you could think of they have tried from legal injunctions to you name it, it's just stuff that I can't even remember. Last year we ended up in circuit court with an injunction for other stuff as well. Like I think in one week we spent 70,000. Yeah, yeah, 70,000. You see what we do, it was all, that's money that I've saved. You know, I we're doing this bloody job. You know what I mean? And you're just going, why am I fucking wasting it on these? Which, we, we, well, what do we do? I can't keep fighting them like that, you know what I mean? Just can't fucking do it, you know? It's, it's the David and Goliath situation, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's just madness, look. Like. You know, there's three boats, we're all local lads to Greystones, you know? We're either born or reared in the town and living close to it now, or, you know, We'll sort this out, we'll do whatever it takes to sort this out, you know? They've tried everything, they've tried in the junction, they've tried blocking us out with gates, they've tried blocking us out with blocks. I feel at this minute in time, the reason that we're not hearing anything is that there's legal arguments now between all the other parties about how they're going to deal with it. Any time it was quiet for any period of time, it was always an explosion afterwards. Tensions will rise again. What we wanted in Greystones was an area, be it for three boats, two boats, five boats, whatever, but an area that is the fisherman's area. That's what we wanted in the first place and that's what we still want now is an area that's recognised as a fisherman's area because, you know, after I'm gone, or maybe my, one of my kids will get into fishing, I don't know, maybe one of the lads out here's kids will get into fishing. You know, maybe one of the other fishermen's kids will get into it. Maybe none of us will get into it. Maybe there won't be an industry, but at the same time, and there's plenty of, you know, young kids who come down to watch what we do, who's to say they won't get involved in fishing in the future? And if we don't fight for an area in Greystones, it's not, they're not going to have a, an area, or there won't be fishermen from Greystones. So, 
that was 95% of our fight with them. Was, if we don't do this, no one's going to do it. Do you get me? If, if we just give in and go, we'll go back to going there, that wouldn't have been the easy thing to do. It would have cost a lot less and, you know, that's what they wanted us to do. But uh, we were just weren't willing to do it. There's three lads on all the boats, so that's nine between the three boats, okay? At every job at sea, there's a little over five jobs on land. There's 45 jobs on land, there's nine of us at sea. There's 54 jobs being created by three boats going to work, you know? It's a fantastic little industry, and why would, why would anyone, you know, cause this situation? Why would they have done it? It's very short-sighted, like. How did they think that we were just going to go away and not come back to our hometowns?